What's up, the squad? Back with another video. I'm reckless, family. Hopefully, the volume is okay. Y'all can hear me uh, clearly. Um, <clears throat> Y'all see in the title. Um, I'm, I'm gonna get in more to that after you found me the video, um, but a 19 minute video. But I'm gonna get more into that um, of what's going on with that that whole situation. A little short story, nothing too long. But um, definitely seen this video. Had a lot of people um emailing this video sending this video and was like you need to react to this asap blah blah, blah. and then i seen a, a thumbnail seen the title and stuff like that and i was like hey i definitely need to check that out um but you already know make sure you hit the like button hit the subscribe button let's get a video that is why in the shadow of the old state capitol where lincoln once called on a house divided to stand together, where common hopes and common dreams still live, I stand before you today to announce my candidacy for President of the United States of America. Many on the left claim that President Donald J. Trump was one of the most divisive and corrupt presidents in history, but is that really true? Many will say the degradation of race relationships occurred under the watch of his predecessor, President Barack Obama. Obama made the claim that, quote, my administration is free of scandal. Well, mm. let's put that statement to the test, shall we? Y'all see who we're walking next to right there. Did our first black president improve race relations or hurt it? How would Barack Obama be considered one of the most corrupt what did he do or allow to be done that was unethical, if not illegal? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, a veteran of the United States Army and Marine Corps, former history professor, uh, book author, and welcome to this episode of Forgotten History. Split. My thing is, I thought he was, uh, I know that a lot of people were saying like back then and like still now that like he's like the, obviously the first black president but like i don't know wouldn't that make wouldn't that make him like the first biracial because ain't this i'm trying to think i don't know i don't know i feel like there was a whole thing too about like his nationality and stuff like that but i i guess Did President Obama help race relations or hurt it? Here are some clear cases showing he did not help at all. The 2009 arrest of Harvard University professor Henry Louis Gates Jr. after a 911 call of a break-in at his property, which was later cleared up, prompted Obama to jump to a racial conclusion, saying the white police officer involved acted stupidly, insinuating a racial motive. Obama later called the police officer, Sergeant James Crowley, to apologize for the comment, but the public went crazy with it. Hmm. The Florida Trayvon Martin case in 2012 saw Obama immediately take up the case against the shooter, George Zimmerman, inflaming racial tensions by saying in a White House speech that, quote, if he had a son, that child would look like Trayvon. This is a tragedy. Before there was an investigation, tainting public opinion. The truth came out during the trial that Martin attacked Zimmerman, who shot Martin in self-defense, which Obama never mentioned. This was the start of the Black Lives Matter movement. It really was. That was the start. I, I kind of forgot about that, but I remember everybody um, was buying like iced teas and Skittles and a whole bunch of stuff. I, I remember that. And I think that's, that's really what set it off with, you know, like they said, the BLM. And then what really set it off with, you know, um, the start of, of, of dividing even more um, is, is when that happened, honestly. Movement created upon a lie, but it wouldn't be the last. In 2014, Michael Brown was killed by Ferguson, Missouri police officer Darren Wilson, who responded to an assault and robbery call. And Obama sided with the Democrat race baiters, BLM, that it was an unwarranted shooting, calling in the murder spurring BLM types. Over the past year, we've come to see more clearly than ever 
the frustration in many communities of color and the feeling that our laws can be applied unevenly. After Ferguson, I said that we have to face these issues squarely. The great lie was that Brown had his hands up saying, don't shoot. The eyewitnesses later stated Brown, who had just stolen merchandise from a convenience store and assaulted the owner, never put his hands up and reached into the police car. And forensic evidence proved that Brown attacked Officer Wilson and tried to take his weapon. His DNA was found on the car door, the pistol, the holster, and Wilson's uniform. Wilson was exhausted. And that 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 is one thing too that like I, I wanted to mention to a lot of people, and that I mentioned before, is that it's extremely important to listen to a police officer regardless of what you did. If you did something bad, just listen to a police officer because things can't end up badly, and that's just what it is. My dad's taught me a lot with it, you know. Uh, that's one thing uh, um, that my dad has taught is to respect police officers. He's been a police officer for almost 25 years. And that's one thing that you do is respect. No matter what's going on is respect because things can go either way. Um, and that's why a lot of them wear body cams now. Um, I can see that these officers don't have body cams on. I don't know if they cars do, um, but they don't have body cams on. But that's why it's important. And then that's, that's why it's important that police officers say, you know, for my safety and yours is to comply. And that's that's just what it is, you know. That I'm not... I'm not by any means, saying that all cops are, are good, all cops are bad, um, because there are some bad cops and there are some really good cops. Or the pistol, the holster, and Wilson's uniform. Wilson was exonerated, but his life and career were over, all because of this event and the lie perpetrated by President Obama and Black Lives Matter. These racial tensions and the charges started the riots and laid the groundwork for the future domestic terrorist group, BLM, also known as Burn, Loot, Murder, for their violence, mm. for the slightest unfounded provocation. As a result of this instigation, more police officers have been murdered in retaliation for perceived injustices by BLM and Antifa supporters, totally supported by the Democratic Coalition. During the War on Terrorism, Obama changed the military rules of engagement in 2009 and 2010, which restrained troops from firing in order to spare civilian casualties, cut back on airstrikes and artillery strikes, the types of support that protect troops during raids and ambushes. Americans are deeply ambivalent about war, but having fought for our independence, we know a price must be paid for freedom. The results were double the casualties suffered by coalition forces, especially Americans, and many more casualties suffered by civilians targeted by the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. The military was not allowed to take the offensive action against known targets. Rather, they were a reaction force to hostility, and even then, they were restricted in their response levels. The Iran nuclear deal is another scandal. Obama led the European Union coalition in giving Iran the green light to nuclear capability. The agreement was supposedly not for nuclear weapons, only nuclear energy, and was subject to unannounced inspections and verification at the established facilities. Soon after, all sanctions against Iran were lifted and billions of dollars of Iranian assets were returned, Iran then made their facilities secure military installations that could not be accessed for inspection, therefore violating the agreement. I'm hearing a lot of talking points being repeated about this is a bad deal. This is a historically bad deal. This will threaten Israel and threaten the world and threaten the United States. I mean, there's been a lot of that. But Obama did nothing about it. In addition, mm. Obama did nothing when Iranian gunboats took several U.S. sailors prisoner in international waters. Obama then gave Iran $1.7 billion in cash in various currencies, even after Iran was proven to be the supplier of IEDs used in Iraq and Afghanistan and were supporting terrorist groups. $400 million in cash was sent the same day that Tehran agreed to release four American prisoners. With Obama's approval, attorney Eric Holder used the Department of Justice 
to block voter ID and signature verification in federal elections in every state, as it would make voter fraud much easier and benefit Democrats. That was a violation of federal voting laws and also a violation of the Tenth Amendment, as a state's rights issue on establishing their own state voting rules. Fast and Furious was part of Project Gunrunner, a program of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. The idea behind Project Gunrunner was to supposedly stem the flow of firearms into Mexico by interdicting straw purchasers and gun traffickers within the United States. The plan changed when these buyers were deliberately recruited to purchase the weapons, send them to Mexico as to allow traceable firearms to be tracked. None of the targeted high-level cartel figures have ever been arrested as a result. In the Tucson and Phoenix area, the ATF purposely allowed licensed firearms dealers to sell weapons with GPS trackers, but the plan was doomed to failure as the limited battery life on the tracking chips was not considered. This also was not a congressionally approved operation violating U.S. federal laws for a number of reasons, resulting in U.S. border agent Brian Terry being killed in December 2010 by one of these weapons. That was when it began to fall apart. House Republicans approved a measure to hold Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt of Congress when he refused to hand over documents after February 4, 2011. They acknowledged that hundreds had been killed and wounded as a result of the ridiculous program. Mexican prosecutor Patricia Gonzalez's brother was murdered along with 200 others through Operation Fast and Furious. Wow. Regarding the deaths, on December 8, 2011, Holder admitted before the House Judiciary Committee, quote, Unfortunately, I think that's true regarding to the deaths. Very corrupt and no accountability. At Holder's request, Obama invoked executive privilege. If he had not, Holder would have gone to prison and Obama may have been impeached. Mm. In 2016, a federal court ruled uh. that privilege does not cover criminal acts, as Richard Nixon learned. A House lawsuit to try to recover the records was settled and the matter was dropped in April 2019 after control of the House had shifted to Democrats. They protected Obama's and Holder's illegal activities. We already have a video on Benghazi, but this cover-up is too good to let pass. After Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Under Secretary Patrick Kennedy abandoned Ambassador Chris Stevens and his team to die to include withholding U.S. military support despite assets being in the region, the cover-up started. Clinton, Obama, and Susan Rice immediately tried to blame the well-planned, well-coordinated terrorist attack which followed the death of Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi to cover up a weapons shipment operation. Christy Rogers, wife of HPSCI chairman Mike Rogers and president and CEO of Aegis Defense Services, LLC, a major Democrat donor, won the large global security contract from the State Department for Benghazi. However, in one of the most insane decisions in recent history, they subcontracted the security of the compound to the 17 February Martyrs Brigade, an affiliate of Al-Qaeda. They were responsible for security guards and had opened the SMC gates to the attackers and then joined in on the attack. The cover-up started immediately as Clinton, Susan Rice, and others that's hit wild. all the network and cable news. A lot of dark stuff that's going on. A lot of dark stuff that's going on. That's crazy. This is stuff I knew nothing about. But you already know, I've got to get it out there to everybody. The cover started this. immediately as Clinton, Susan Rice, and others hit all the network and cable news shows, telling the world that the attack was the result of an anti-Islamic video spurring a spontaneous reaction, therefore the attack. Clinton even lied under oath during her congressional hearings with Obama's approval. In essence, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama allowed good men to die to cover up a bad political decision, then arrested and prosecuted an innocent man to cover it up. It was a political season after all. That was the main reason Clinton had to try and destroy all the emails maintained on her illegal server in violation of the National Security Act 
and then destroyed all communication devices despite a legal congressional subpoena. Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State used a civilian, unencrypted, and therefore illegal computer server in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1924, which covers unauthorized removal and retention of classified documents or materials. At issue are four sections of the law that she violated. But, but, they don't Trump talk about it. They on him like white on rice. They on him back. But then you got, you, you, you have heard this. Oh, they, we gonna cover it up. It's all the good. Federal we Records Act, the Freedom of Information Act, National Security Act, the National Archives and Records Administration's regulations, and Section 1924 of Title 18 of the U.S. Crimes and Criminal Procedure Code. I made a mistake using a private email. That's for sure. Um, and if I had to do it over again, I would obviously do it differently. Um, but I'm not going to make any excuses. It was a mistake, and I take responsibility for that. But so she say that, and it's all good. That's crazy. That's crazy. Any excuses? It was a mistake, and I take responsibility for that. Bo Bergdahl, the U.S. Army deserter and some call traitor, went to the Taliban, deserting his post on June 30th, 2009 later costing the lives of soldiers. At least six soldiers from his own battalion were killed during the search and others wounded looking for him. He was traded for the Taliban Five, who were transferred from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, to custody in Doha, Qatar. And they are Mohammed Fazl, Kairala Kakara, Abdul Haq Wasik, Arula Nuri, and Mohammed Nabi Omari. They were the Taliban Army Chief of Staff, a mm -hmm. Taliban deputy minister of intelligence, a former Taliban interior minister, and two other senior Taliban figures. I just finished speaking with Secretary Liu and senior officials at the Treasury Department to discuss the investigation into IRS personnel who improperly screened conservative groups applying for tax-exempt status. The IRS scandal of 2013 refers to the Internal Revenue Service's disclosure that it had targeted conservative, religious, and Tea Party groups. They also refused tax exemption for those charities, nonprofits, and religious organizations that were not clearly leaning towards Democrats. Democrats supported organizations had no such impediments. Director Lois Lerner, under the direction of Eric Holder and possibly Barack Obama, unleashed the power of the criminal IRS activities to target political and ideological opponents. According to the Washington Times in 2017, Lerner and her former deputy, Holly Paz, asked a federal judge to seal in perpetuity tapes and depositions they gave in a court case. The fallout was fierce and led to the resignation of Lerner, but there was no real accountability. The U.S. Department of Justice secretly obtained telephone records of conservative reporters and editors for the Associated Press Wire Service in 2012. The most high profile was Fox News correspondent James Rosen. No probable cause was offered and no warrants issued. Wiretaps and records confiscation were authorized by Eric Holder, all without legal precedent and in violation of the First and Fifth Amendments. Obama lied to the American people when he told them that the Affordable Care Act would not affect insurance policies or doctor-patient relationships, but people lost their insurance or were forced to pay for additional coverage that they did not need and could mm. not afford. So this is just an example of how the Affordable Care Act is doing what it's designed to do. Deliver more choices, better benefits, a check on rising costs, and higher quality health care. That's what it was designed to do, and we're already seeing those effects take place. In addition, Obama took $500 million from Medicare to fund it until his mandatory coverage tax recouped the money, forcing employers with over 50 full-time employees to carry the unaffordable insurance. As a result, employers reduced their workforce or made their full-time employees part-time so as to not to have the expense. Sometimes they just fired people. This started the stagnation wow. of the economy, and GDP never rose above 3% as a result, mostly hovering in the 1.6% domain for the rest of his administration. 
It was challenged in the Supreme Court who ruled that it was legal as a tax, as Congress can make laws and levy taxes. But remember, Obama promised that it would not be mandatory or a tax. He lied. Hmm. And that's why they say that, though. That's why they say that this was, well, he was the worst. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot in 19 minutes. We're only 16 minutes in, but that's a lot in 19 minutes. So uh, we're going to keep fighting to secure that right, to make sure that every American gets the care that they need when they need it at a price they can afford. That's the America we believe in. That's what families deserve. That's what we're going to keep on working to deliver. We're going to keep on working to make sure many people around this country who are already paying premiums are getting cheaper prices, that the money's being actually spent <coughs> on their health care. That's crazy. Obama overstepped his presidential authority when he imposed the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, also known as the Dreamers Act, by executive order. This was basically amnesty for illegal aliens who violated federal immigration law. The purpose was to have them naturalized as Democratic voters and then have their parents follow suit. It supposedly delays the deportation of people who came to the U.S. as children if they do not have documentation. That has now become permanent and they get free taxpayer education and work permits. The second part was the scheme to create a false dossier on Trump, paid for by the Democrat National Committee and Hillary Clinton claiming sources could prove Trump had committed serious federal law violations and even international crimes. This was all later proven to be false. I saw the information, I read the information outside of that meeting. Uh, it's all fake news, it's phony stuff, it didn't happen. But the liberal Obama-friendly media ran with it, and to this day, they still continue to support this lie. This led to a three-year, $30 million taxpayer-funded false flag investigation initiated by the FBI and Director James Comey, filing four illegal and falsified FISA warrants to justify spying on the Trump administration once he was in the White House. The Obama administration was mired in scandal, but with the assistance of the liberal media, there was a great attempt to cover these events up. Logical people know better and Hillary Clinton lost the election as a result of much of this corruption coming to light. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. But then history. again, Joe. <sighs> Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. He's in there. It's crazy. It's a lot of stuff, a lot of information um, that I got out of this video with it being 19 minutes. That's a lot of information. Um, great information to gather you know but you know also at the same time it's it's some horrible stuff that it went on and still going on to this day um definitely appreciate everybody um i know a lot of people was wondering about the title um about this my parents are democrats my dad says that he's an independent leaning democrat but he's been a democrat um for for a while uh he and my mom, it was it was mostly, I want to say, my, my father, obviously, you know. Um, he's been at a couple few videos, if, you know, some of y'all um, has caught him uh, in a couple videos. It has been a couple few. Um, but I always, I, I grew up, and that's all was in my head is Democrat, 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 Democrats. You know, um, and Obama got, got in the office. I think it was a change for a lot of people, um, a lot of black people, I would I want to say, um, just for the simple fact of it being, and I'm pretty sure he's biracial, but a black, you know, president. Um, and I feel as if regardless of skin color and who you are, and yes, I understand, you know, being the first, that's one thing, but it's another thing when you do things for the country when you do stuff for the people and stuff like that. Um, and seeing this now, it's it was a lot of dark stuff that was going on. Me personally, me growing up, I didn't pay attention to a lot. All I knew was Democrat, Democrat, Democrat. That's all I knew. And 
everything changed this year. Um, a lot of stuff changed this year with me, you know, starting to be independent when, you know, my boy, shout out to Half, Half and Jay, they like, hey, you need to, you feel me, hit, hit on these, hit on these political videos, see, see what you enjoy. And I'm like, man, I don't know. I was like, I can try, but I don't know nothing about it. He was like, you don't have to know nothing about it. You know, you're going to learn as you go. And I actually just texted him uh, not too long ago, about 30 minutes ago. And he basically was like, you should check it out. You know, um, a lot of insight. He was like, we can't, we, I'm pretty sure they're conservative. Um, half and half and Jay, if I'm not mistaken, pretty sure they are. And, um, basically was telling me that, you know, whatever you, you know, choose and whatever is best for you, that's best for you. That's best for your family. So I got to talking to me, did a couple videos and I'm not gonna lie. It was a little boring. It was boring to me. You know, it's a little interesting, but it was boring. And I was like, this ain't me. Cause I, you know, started doing videos, you know, uh, I was, I was doing music, comedy, sports and stuff like that. Starting off with YouTube. Um, and I, I, I changed completely um, with, you know, doing political. I'm still going to get, you know, back to music, uh, but it's been a little busy. Um, it's definitely been a little busy. Um, got the movie coming up, uh, Reactors. Uh, we don't know what it's streaming on yet. Pretty sure uh, Sean, big shout out to Sean Rick. Said something about Netflix, uh, HBO Max, Hulu, uh, Apple TV. Uh, a lot of stuff that it could, you know, hire the bitter. Um, but I can't obviously talk about too much i know for a fact that who's going to be in a movie i don't know matter of fact i'm not even gonna say i'm not even gonna say because i don't know if they they uh mentioned it but it's some reactors that uh, i'm sure y'all know that is going to be uh starring in the movie but um definitely uh it changed for me uh this year uh with me being conservative um and i definitely uh look at a lot of stuff you know um with you know obama and you know, and the rest of, you know, Biden, uh, Clinton, seeing different stuff. And it's like, dang, like, how could somebody vote, you know, for these people that's doing stuff that is horrible for America, that is horrible for you and your, your household and completely changed for me. But uh, definitely appreciate everybody tuning in and watching this reaction. Make sure you hit the like button, that subscribe. Make sure y'all stay tuned for the next video. You already know what's going down. Catch y'all next one.